Turn it up. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Cunningham Garage. I'm Steve. Welcome. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, hit that subscribe button now and follow along with anything on the channel that you might like. Uh, back on to what we're working on today is my 1986 Toyota Corolla. I picked up a 3S GE Beams motor, which is on the ground behind me. You can see. Well, today we're gonna put it in, hopefully. Uh, but I'm gonna go through what I've modified on the motor, what I've moved around, and anything else that I'm gonna be doing before I put it in. So I guess let me turn the camera around and I will show you guys what I've done so far. So here we are, here's the engine. So I'm gonna start with the shifter. So let me step on the other side of this stuff. The shifter on the beams is usually, it sits further back. This, when you put it into a Corolla, the shifter sits very far back. It's not in the stock location. But what you can do to kind of help yourself is, you can see this is shiny and this is bolted here. This used to be bolted here. I've actually moved the whole shifter about two inches forward. And it's really cool because Toyota actually makes it where everything can be shifted forward about two inches, even the shifter part right here. There's a little, there we go. There's a little pin at the back and a bolt up front. Unbolt those, slide it off, turn it around, and then bolt that back on forward and you gained yourself about two inches. So, bravo to Toyota make things easier like they they knew we we're gonna swap this stuff into things uh motor mounts i replaced the original motor mounts i've taken them off and replaced them with aftermarket motor mounts these are to bolt directly into the 86 corolla and i'm using i'm gonna upgrade them later i know i might hear something from somebody but i'm gonna use i bought a set of brand new 86 corolla motor like actual rubber mounts. They should work just fine. So I got them on either side. The exhaust manifold is off. I put some stuff in there to block it up. Uh, there is no accessories on the front of this thing now, except for the alternator, which is uh, right there. So there used to be an AC compressor and a tensioner and a power steering pump. I don't need any of that. My car, my car doesn't have anything. <laughs> um, so I don't need power steering. I've got manual steering. I don't need AC because I was stupid and yanked it all out. It didn't work anyway, so it was fine. So after all that, I've got this lovely pile of parts. Motor mount, the stock motor mounts, I, they were ripped. There's the AC compressor, the the power steering and stock mounts so i mean if you don't need any of that you're going to save yourself a good 40 pounds 50 pounds right there just in crap so yeah so hopefully we'll be i've already spaced out my engine or my subframe which is those little spacers right though mine are not little mine's going to sit lower than usual so mine's going to sit really nice in the engine bay uh yeah let me show you uh, another problem I had was the the exhaust manifold. The reason it's off is, oh, let me show you real quick. So here we are. I've got my exhaust manifold unbolted and it's in a vise. But my problem is, so you see, there's one mounting bolt. So you mount another exhaust flange on here. There's the second one. And there's the third one. Uh, yeah. So that one looks like it got hit with a oxygen acetylene torch or something. So I'm going to have to focus. There we go. So obviously you can see that's not going to work at all, which is fine. So what I'm going to do is heat this up, put some penetrating fluid on it, let it sit for like a day, heat it up, and I'm going to go ahead and remove this and replace it with another one because 
I've got a junk bolt bin, like everyone should have, and I have extras of these, and they're in good shape, so I can replace it. And then I can put that back on to that. But luckily, that can go in the car before I need to put the exhaust manifold back on. It'll actually give me more room without it in the car, so I'm, I'm kind of happy. I'm fine with it. And it's like it's hard to put back on. So I'm going to figure out what I need to do next, and maybe I'll mount the camera up and let you guys watch me fail putting the engine in by myself. Uh, probably not. That's embarrassing. How about I just come back when the motor's in, <laughs> and I'll explain how how bad it was. So I'll be right back. So we're back. Motor's in. It actually wasn't that bad. It looks really bad right now. I started to do wiring already. So what you can see, you can hear my neighbor's dog barking at me. So you can see I put the motor mounts in and those are original motor mounts for an 86 Corolla. They actually worked pretty good for me. So yeah. That's a good option for somebody if they need it. So something I will suggest, got the engine to fit in, uh, something on the back that I read and it is, let me move some garbage, beat the firewall in. Look it up. There's, two, there's like two different areas on either side along, you know, basically along the firewall here you need to basically take a big ass hammer and just knock it in some because that hose right there and the fittings that are behind it will not fit unless you hit the firewall in so basically the engine will be resting against the firewall and you'll have some issues and on the other side it's kind of the same story well you can't really see it down in there now but yeah you'll have some issues. But on another positive note, I had, uh, the fuel system is done <laughs> already. I had a whole AN fitting fuel system ready to go for uh, the one UZ I had in here. Well, it turns out all the fittings fit. So, well, you can't really see that one too well, but there's one on the back of the fuel rail and then I pick, I've had a really old school TRD fuel pressure regulator and that's it. Fuel system's basically ready to go. So now the next thing, oh, let me show you the inside. You will. So here's the shifter. So, yep, shifts in gear. You do have to cut the crap out of the tunnel. Let me uh, let me show you. Let me just move some crap out of the way. Nothing's in here permanent. Look how much I had to cut. I actually cut too much. Uh, I really only needed to cut to about right here. I went too far. The original shifter was about here. So, I mean, it's a good four inches further back so it's still that sucks so I'll just have to figure out the uh, the whole plastic setup on this area now but honestly with me sitting in the car it's still not bad like it still feels comfortable and I guess online some people are saying that let me shift it in gear that your e-brake will hit mine's it's still it's still good so that's awesome all the wiring for the inside that i need to do put the dash back in but i am moving forward so yes let me uh back up here uh so basically cut your tunnel to where the shifter will fit up in there and something i will recommend when you put your engine in it will be down because you know your transmission is going to weigh it down in the back. What I did, and it worked beautifully, if I can open my door, is I took a steel bar, literally 
a big ass steel bar. I should have, yeah. If you can get like a six or seven foot steel bar, something that can go through, roll the windows down and literally stick a bar through the windows. And then I took a ratchet strap, which is still there <laughs> to pull it out. I put a ratchet strap around the transmission and around the bar and then ratchet strapped it and it pulled the transmission up exactly where I needed it. And I was able to go underneath, put the mount on, no problem. And it made, it made the engine sit like it should and all was good to go. So yeah. So that's, so far that's it guys. The engine went in. Uh, another quick tip, I guess it worked out great for me. Because if you noticed, my whole garage, my whole garage is gravel, which sucks. It's a whole lot better than what I used to have. I used to work out in basically a field, which was my backyard until I built this. So if you're in gravel like me, your engine lift isn't going to roll around at all. So what I did was I had the engine lift sitting here with the motor on it. And I literally just took the car and rolled it into the engine. So I, I just lifted the motor up, rolled the car into it, lowered the motor down some, rolled the car forward more. It turned out it was really simple. And then when I was done, I rolled it back up onto my lift area. I guess, I don't know. I guess I made a small weird. What do you guys think of my whole lift setup? <laughs> So, I mean, it holds the car up like two feet and I've actually made the pads higher than they should be. So I could actually go up under the car and I put yoga mats under there so I don't have to lay in gravel and uh, everything works out great. So you can see the, you can see the fuel lines hanging down the back there. I got to put them up in their holders and all the way to the back of the car. So. So I guess on I guess on the next episode will be maybe me finishing up the fuel system and I might even pressure test it, put some fuel in that tank for the first time. So uh, which it is, I'll show it in the next video. Well, I will do that because on the next video, I'll put fuel in the tank for the first time because it is a fuel cell in the back that I built a while back. So prime that up, make sure there's no leaks, don't want any fires. Uh, and then move on to wiring or something like that and get this thing fired up. <laughs> so hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.